All right, our first question came in to an email to me, so I'm gonna post it right now, and we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> All right, the question is, Jonathan, why do you criticize other dating advice? Jonathan, why do you criticize other dating advice? All right, great question. By the way, folks, I, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I actually criticize a lot of other dating advice. Now, does that mean I'm always negative and criticizing, <laughs> going back to that uh, pulling away or ghosting? I'm here to say that part of my reasoning or my rationale is because I see and witness a lot. There is a tremendous amount of advice out there in the dating and relating realm or you know, whether it's dating advice or relationship advice. And a lot of it is based on unhealthy principles that I am so object against. So again, if you watch my videos, you know I often bring up the copy of the book, The Rules, The Rules. This is terrible. I mean, there are some nuggets in here. I will say this, like you can never change a man. That's a good nugget. But there is the advice in here is very manipulative and it's egoic based. Let me repeat that, it's manipulative and egoic based, and it only temporarily creates attraction. This is why I criticize this behavior or this, the, you know, the content in books like this, because it's not coming from a place of generosity, it's not coming from a place of care, it's coming from a place of manipulation. And I am not a big proponent of people who are trying to manipulate one another. And, and I've, I've gotten a lot of, of, of feedback from others uh, here telling me they agree that this book is very manipulative. This is why I would much prefer all of you to read the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated. Check out this book. This is a great book to lean into a more healthier way of looking at human beings, not based on gender expectations, because I think part of the problem with the relationship advice, it's based on gender expectation. And this book is all about how to be in a heart-centered space in relationship. Let me repeat that, how to be in a heart-centered space in relationship. Because let me give you some advice, let me give you some examples of advice that I can't stand and why I criticize. First off, number one, you've heard this before, you've heard it a hundred thousand times. Men are hunters, they love the chase and they love to pursue. Okay. Now, that might be true for men in their 20s and 30s. Okay, we this is basically based on cavemen who chased buffalo, who chased to buffalo so they could eat, and they got used to being in the hunt. So for millions of years, men have chased buffalo. Somehow this applies to relationship advice. How the fuck does that apply to relationship advice? Ladies, when men are on the hunt and chase from a physical standpoint towards women, what are we hunting and chasing? Is it, I want to be in a relationship. I want to be in a relationship. I just want to be in a relationship and I'm going to hunt and hunt and hunt and I'm going to pursue that. Is that when men are hunting? Or are men hunting sex? Because that's what they're on the hunt for. So to assume that men love the hunt, men love the chase, just understand this. Yes, we do like to get laid and we like to make effort to get laid, but that doesn't in no way mean we're hunting or chasing a relationship, okay? In no way does that mean that. Okay, so to apply something that cavemen did and then say it as dating rhetoric so women just know you can just sit back in your feminine energy and lean back and do nothing because a man will chase you because he wants to claim you, you know, um, because men are so chivalrous is a crock of shit. Because what are we chasing? We're chasing sex, okay? We're not chasing fully committed relationships. Now, that's not to say that our men out there are not, first off, let me repeat that. There are plenty of men out there who want a serious, fully committed relationship who are not chasing sex. They're, they're basically on the hunt for both, if you will. But you have to recognize this. The whole narrative that men are on the hunt represents fully committed relationship, that's not true. Another thing that you're told oftentimes that men are hardwired to be provider protectors. Men are hardwired to be provider protectors. So isn't it fascinating that over one third of 
kids born today, at least here in the United States that I'm aware of, are actually with without they're not co-parenting and the fathers are not actively involved in the children's life. One third. I, I Googled it this morning. OK, it's actually I think the number is even a little higher. Um, so so what does that say? If we are hardwired to do something, that would mean that 99 percent of men would be wanting to provide and protect for their family. But that doesn't happen in a third of the cases. And also for the demographic that I speak to midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement, the vast majority of people who've gone through divorce are like this when it comes to the idea of taking on financial responsibility for someone else. So then when you're hearing this advice from oftentimes from female coaches telling you, well, men are hardwired to be provider protectors. So they're just gonna do everything so perfect in this relationship. Let's look at the reality of things. So when I criticize dating advice, it's because yes, you can apply some things and make assumptions about things. But the reality is, does it hold up to the sniff test? <laughs> does it hold up to the sniff test? And no, it does not. What else did I put down here? Oh, OK. What about women who are nurturers? Women are just natural nurturers. But didn't I say a moment ago that one of the biggest complaints from men is they don't feel appreciated in relationship? How can women who are natural nurturers not be appreciative of the men that they're in relationship if they're just natural, hardwired to be nurturers? Now, to the extent that I do believe a woman who raised, who makes babies is more likely to be a nurturer to her child does not necessarily equate to relationship. I know of a ton of people in relationship with a lot with women who are absolutely entitled and they just feel that the man should do ever, all the work and they should do, do, dote on that guy and the woman makes no effort. Now, I'm not suggesting that's you listening to this. And if it is, hopefully this is your wake up call. So to come back as to why do I criticize other dating advice? Listen, I said this before. I'm not here to say that my advice is the absolute truth. I'm just offering perspective. You just take it for what it's worth. If it resonates with you, great. And if it doesn't, then it may not be your um, cup of tea. And that's OK, too. I'm just offering perspective. Thank, I want to thank the person that sent in that question. I really appreciate it because it allowed me to share a little bit about why I share what I do. All right. 